Hello and welcome. My name is Deborah Thwin Arvinlow, and I'm a blogger and photographer for Second Life. Today I'm going to show you what I would call a soft lens flare effect, where you can control the color and intensity of a lens flare sort of look, where you have light coming from a light source that uh, affects your photo. So it adds light and depth and reality to your photos. Personally, I like to use this on green screen photos because I can put the light in front and behind my avatar, but you could still use this effect on a flat photo where you have a, a, a Second Life background or a Second Life set or whatever. So to start, I'm going to show you the different kinds of generic lens flares that you can get using Photoshop itself. So you can render some lens flares in Photoshop, but they don't have a lot of versatility so you end up with basically just whatever you have and then it looks like anyone else's lens flare who's used the same effect so it doesn't allow you to be very unique but it is easy to use so some pros some cons so we're going to go to filter render and then we're going to go to lens flare so the typical lens flare is going to be the 50 to 300 millimeter zoom you typically won't need to change your brightness and then you can move your light source around on your screen using the crosshairs. So in this case, I want my light source to be down here. I want the sun to poke through the archway. So I'm going to hover over that area with my crosshairs and then click OK and it renders me a lens flare. So it's a cool effect, but it's a little bit boring and generic and a lot of people use it. So you don't have a lot of versatility and you look sort of like anyone else who's used the same lens flare effect. So Instead, you could create a soft light glow effect without all of the rings and all of that. Just a soft light glow to give a similar concept to your photo. So I'm going to go back to my layers. And I'm going to add a new layer. So I'm going to go down here, create new layer. I'm going to select my new layer and I'm going to go over here to fill tool. By default, it has a little paint bucket. I'm going to hold that and choose gradient tool. Then up here, I want to choose the radial gradient. The radial gradient is like a circle inside of a square. And then here, I want to edit a gradient and I want to create my own gradient that's going to be black on the right hand side and a color on the other side. So you can go up here and go to any of these really and you can change the color. So in this case, I want the side to be black, right side black. So I'm going to go black. And then on this side, I want to make it whatever the light source color should be. So in this case, I want sort of a greenish yellow light so it looks like the sun is coming through the jungle greenery. So here I'm going to choose this and I'm going to change this color to be, you can select a color in here, make it a little brighter and make it a little more yellow so it looks more like the sun. Okay, so I've created, um, let me make this a little brighter. I like to make sort of bright colors because you can always reduce them later. Alright, so I've got a sort of bright greenish color for my sunlight and then I have a dark color on the end for the other side of my gradient. So I'll click OK and then I'm going to use my gradient tool to make a radius. It draws a line and then that line creates a radius. So you can see that it's created a um, the diameter of my circle through the line. So Basically what happens is you take the line and you drag it and it builds your radius from that from the diameter. So it takes this here and it creates the diameter from that. So keep that in mind when you are doing your um, lens flare effects that whatever you take here is going to be half of your circle and then the other half will blow out on the other side. So after I've created an effect, I can go in and change my blending mode. Here's the blending modes to screen. Oop, not lighten, screen. So once I have that effect, you can see it's already begun the sort of look of having the sunlight. But what I like to do is I like to build multiple gradients. You can use different colors even if you wanted to, to make the effect gradually look more realistic. So I'll build another layer. Maybe I want to have like a little bit of a sun showing the actual sun. So I'll make a little version and then I'll change this to screen. 
So I've sort of created a point of light. And then if I don't like it, I can just increase it a little or whatever. So I'm slowly building on my um, picture the effect that I'm looking for. Oop, that's too far over. I am constantly fixing my effect. <laughs> so um, you may have to do that as well. What you want to really do is focus on where your light source would be and then make your radius go out from your light source. So I'm going to change this to screen. So you slowly sort of build and you can change the colors if you don't like them. So I could, if I wanted to, I could flatten these, merge the layers, change them to screen, and then I can change the hue to whatever I want. Or you can keep them separate and play with them separately either way. So I'll go back to having all those layers. So I've got these layers and they're creating this cool sort of effect. And if I don't like how intense it is, I can also reduce my opacity to make the effect less in some places if I'd like. Reduce the opacity a little. You can reduce the saturation if you find that the color doesn't work. Basically, you can play around with it as much as you want. And then maybe I also want to add one behind my avatar which is the benefit of being able to do this on a green screen photo is I can take my light source and I can make a big old one and I can move it behind my avatar and I can change it to screen. So I can sort of make it blend together so I'll have the light behind and then I'll have the light in front as well. So we got the light there, reduce the opacity a little duplicate this layer. You sort of just play around with it until you achieve the kind of light that you think that you want. So this color is a little bit too bright for this, so I could change it if I wanted to, but the concept is the idea. So let's go back to before I did these. Let's see. All right, so we will work on this layer. So if you want to create a light that is like a firelight, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of different kinds of lights that can be used to make your photos look more realistic. If I want to add firelight, I'm just going to choose a color that looks sort of firelighty, and I'm going to click OK. So if I want to make a fire, if I have a fire in my scene or whatever, I want to create an effect that looks like it's glowing on me, I can do that. So I can make it look like sunset, I can make it look like fire, I could make it look like a neon light. The possibilities are endless. So if I want it to be neon, I can make it neon. Any kind of lighting that you have, you can create this effect to make it look more realistic. So if you have a lamp post or a neon sign or a fire or any kind of light source, you can use this effect to add the sort of glowing light that you would expect in real life to make it blend in more with your photo. So it helps to blend, especially with green screen photos, helps to blend your photo into the um, background. So it makes it look more like reality. If you uh, have any problems with rings, um, what I mean by that here sometimes you can find when you do gradients, sometimes you get rings um, at the edges of your light. So if you have that problem, you can also, or if you just don't like how soft it is, you can do a little bit of a lens blur on your gradient. So this will take a little while to render. So if you want your lens flare to be just a little bit softer, so let me show you before and after. It's not, it's not a huge I, I don't even know if you can really tell. <laughs> if you had rings, you'd probably be able to tell better. But the concept is if you think that it's not soft enough, you can do blurs on it. So that's about it for this. It's a pretty easy thing to do. It's not um, like hugely difficult. So if you have any questions about the soft lens flare effect, you can leave them in the comments. You can send them to me on Plurk, on Flickr, or in Second Life itself. And if you have suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, same deal. You can leave it in those places. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you found this educational, and I will catch you next time.